Maxie. <coughs> I've been thinking. Should we do season three on the Dr. Joe show? <coughs> you sure? You sure it's a good idea? <coughs> Today, cigar tobacco farmer cares for his cigar tobacco plant by pruning the flowers off the plant as to keep the nutrients going directly to the leaf. Not so in most of Cuba. Hmm. Huh. Today's modern day cigar tobacco farmer uses six primings when removing the leaves, starting from the bottom, removing priming number one, and resting the plant while removing the tiny plants that soon grow where the removed leaf was, known as suckers, as to keep the nutrients going directly to the leaf. Not so in most of Cuba. Let's pause right there. That sounds like really slippery fucking language to me. Not so in most of Cuba. Well, did you know that 99% of the tobacco in the 27 brands, or like 25 of them, is grown in that one area he's referring to? The not most of area? Oh, now I gotta go back to, you know, fucking Dave, you got me jumping back and forth. Let's go back to the Dr. Joe console. I knew I'd put this thing together for some reason. Okay, this should work. Now, you see this little uh, dot right there? That's La Habana. This is where Dave probably spent about 95% of his trip. I don't know how far he traveled. I'm not going to make any assumptions, but let's just assume... <laughs> Dave spent most of his trip in La Habana. You see this? All these areas over here in the middle of Cuba. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven all the way at the ass end over here got two more these are all Vuelta Arriba okay that is where the short filler stuff is grown did you know it'd be actually before I get into that let's go back you see this one dot all the way over here that is Vuelta Abajo now if you look at any box of Cuban cigars in your collection Chances are it says that the tobacco comes from the Vuelta Abajo Valley. The one area that is probably the removed from Dave's most of Cuba statement. Okay? Because it's true. Most of Cuba grows tobacco for other reasons. Cuba grows a ton of tobacco. They export it for cigarettes. They export it for all sorts of fucking things. They even use it in a few, but very few, of their premium cigars. One of those brands is Jose El Piedra. And while it's not very popular among American smokers of Cuban cigars, and probably for this very reason, it is in fact one of the top grossing, top selling global brands from Cuba in all of the world. It's the world's short filler cigar. They sell millions of these things every year. It's like you or I walk into a tobacco shop and we want something good but not too expensive. So, I don't know, we pick up a, a curly head. It's Cuba's curly head. It's Cuba's brevis. Maybe a little better, though. It's one of the top... In fact, it's probably the third most selling brand out of the 27. I'll get to exactly in a minute. But all these regions over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, and 9, those are all what they call Vuelta Arriba. And that is where they grow all the short filler for cigars like Jose El Piedra. There are a few others. There are also the three machine-made ITC brands. Belinda, Troya, Guantanamera. I always pronounce that one wrong. I don't know if I got it right. 
These three machine-made brands are actually harder to find in the States than anything else. There are, there's one that's so rare these days that on Cuban Cigar website it says not known if it's still in existence. One of the Belinda cigars. So, you know, the ITC machine-made cigars are few, far and few between these days due to the affordability of slightly better short filler cigars like Jose El Piedra. I had a viewer of mine actually buy a box once and he liked them very much. Very few American smokers involve themselves with it because they'd rather things like Monte Cristo or Cohiba or Hoya de Monterey. Um, but this is just to show you that when Dave says, not so in most of Cuba, now why would you say something like that? Why would you say most of? Well, because it's not true in some of. So now I'm not calling anyone dumb or anything like that. In fact, it's human nature. Very, very smart people do it. Jump to conclusions, skip over the obvious, things of that nature. Sleight of hand only using your tongue. Sentences like, in most of. We have to think critically here. What exactly is he saying? Well, I know exactly what he's saying because I know that in Vuelta Abajo, where the best tobacco, some of the best tobacco in the world is produced, they are obviously doing these things. Which brings me to my second point, which, meaning the things he said they're not doing. Which brings me to my second point. Let's say they weren't doing them. Let's just say, and they are. They're, they're probably not doing them in all these Vuelta Arriba regions because why should they? It's short fucking filler. The whole plant probably gets popped up. They do it stalk cut style, you know? Even if they didn't do it in Vuelta Abajo, how the fuck would he know? How the fuck would he know? Did, did he stand there for an entire growing season and watch them? Or did he watch them for an hour, or an hour and a half, one day while passing through? Ask yourself, how, many time, how, how much time did he actually spend observing the fields? And even if it was a length of time, I have some other news for you. Dave, you were in Cuba at the ass end of the fucking growing season. What? How do I, how, how the hell does Dr. Joe know that? Well, let me fucking tell you how I know. It's very easy, actually. First, let me get my face out of this monitor. So, holy shit, wait a second. Dave was there at the ass end of the season. How do I know? Well, I'll tell you. But first, let me go right to this statement here. <laughs> I love this one. Today's modern cigar tobacco farmer in Honduras, Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, Costa Rica, Mexico, and the USA grow in fertilized land in a rotation-rested farm and use different seeds to grow different types of tobacco. Not so in Cuba. Uh, again, how the hell do you know how they treat their land? You weren't there on September 15th when they started tilling the soil. Listen, Cuba is very traditional. They have what they believe to be a perfect time of season to start growing, and they stick to it. September 15th is generally considered the time to start tilling the fields, while at the same time, the seedlings are being grown in protected areas, under little plastic tents. Sometimes indoors, sometimes outdoors, depending on weather conditions, but basically they're getting the seedlings up to a point at which they can be planted. So, after they're done tilling the soil, fertilizing the soil, rotating the soil, who knows what the fuck they're doing with the soil, but they're definitely doing more than you saw them doing with it. It's October 15th. The young tobacco plants are now transplanted, where they will stay for approximately 40 days before harvesting begins. October 15th, November 15th, December 1st. December 1st, harvesting begins. 30 days. December 1st, January 1st. January 1st, February, March. You're there, like, way off from a growing cycle, man. You know, maybe if you saw plants, A, maybe you were looking at some of the other regions, not Vuelta Abajo, or B, maybe you were looking at a second run or a second growth or, or something like of that nature. But I tell you what you didn't see. 
You didn't see anything because you couldn't have been there long enough. Okay? Being there in March 8th would be akin to me saying after final harvest, I don't know, late November, early December, deciding to drive up to the farm and saying, what the fuck? There's, no, there's nothing growing. These plants look terrible. And they'd be nothing but a thousand pumpkins as far as the eye can fucking see because that's all grow that grows at that time of year. Everywhere is different. And you were just there at the wrong fucking time. Because it's always been that way. September 15th, growing starts. You know, and within a couple of months, three months or so, it's done. Everything after that is preparation, aging, fermenting, and all that stuff, man. So, so much for that bullshit, as far as your didn't see them priming the flowers in most of Cuba. Come on. Time to fucking move on. That is definitely enough of that. So now you go on. And what about the blend? Get this, there is no blend. For all you Cuban cigar fans out there, if you believe what I'm saying here, you have to be shocked. I was. I'm not shocked because I think you're out of your mind, that you have no fucking clue what you're talking about, okay? Cuban cigars are commodity like wheat and grain. Sure, there are brands, but that is not determined until finished cigars is sized and sorted. I'm sorry. You're completely mistaken, dude. And, and it shows in the pictures you took that you're mistaken. We'll get to that. Every factory is making every brand that is completely false because they are just making finished cigars. Then later it will be determined what cigar it is based on cigar and wrapper color only. Absolutely false. And what about Cuban Master Blenders? What about not the Master Blender but just regular cigar blender? I looked everywhere for him. I asked. I met the farmers, the rollers, the folks that dry the tobacco in the barns. I met tobacco sorters, the tasters, people in packaging. First of all, blends. You know, how you came to the conclusion that there is no blend? Just because what? Just because you saw... I mean, how did you even come to this conclusion? Because you couldn't find the master blender? Or because you saw them, or you, th you thought you saw them sorting all different brands by color? This is not what was happening there. I know it's not. Okay? Number one, blend is very different here than it is in Cuba. In Cuba, it's more of a ratio because they're working with three different primings strictly. And then some various different wrapper leaves from different areas like uh, San Luis um, and different areas known for growing wrapper leaves specifically. But um, blend here, when we say blend, a blend, it refers to things like, you know, taking different strains from different regions and making a cigar out of all of that together. Or blending five different strains of tobacco together. In Cuba, blend is a dirty word. You know, maybe that's why you couldn't find the master blender. You're asking for blender. Number one, do you know how many different words for blend there are in the Spanish language? Look it up. There's like 15 or so. All different words for different types of what you're to referring to. We use one word, blend, for so many different things. Okay? <laughs> Number two, if you understand how blends work, you think the master blender is going to be there all the time? There are only eight Cuban cigar factories, eight, in operation right now. And there are probably four master blenders, maybe even less, for all of these factories, okay? What they do is make sure all the tobacco needed for the allotted cigars to be made is present, and it's then separated into quantities for those major amounts of cigars. He's not going to sit there and separate each fucking cigar worth of blend all day. Somebody else does that. He does the main gist of it. He gets the entire blend together. Tastes a few cigars, maybe makes sure it's right. Maybe tweaks it a little, says no, a little extra Lajero, a little less Volato, something like that. And then from there, they make bundles to which each roller gets. And then they make the cigars out of these pre-blended bundles. Then the master blender's gone. Who knows where he was? He was probably fucking fishing. 
Perhaps it was a language barrier thing, you know? It's... <laughs> who the fuck knows? He was either out or they didn't know what you were talking about. But trust me, there are blends. And as you say right here, first you say, get this, there aren't any. Then later down the line you start saying, is it possible that there are no blends? Okay? And then you say, I believe this is exactly what's happening. That doesn't make it so, man. Just because you don't understand the way things are working over there because they're different from the way things work here, there are no blends. And let me stop right here and say this before we go any further. Like I said in the beginning, no name calling, nothing like that, you know, but I don't know of any other word to use but arrogance. To think that you're what? Fucking Sherlock Holmes and Watson all rolled into one and after 200 years of thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of people from all over the world traveling to Cuba to visit for the exact same reason you did, that what? You single-handedly broke this fucking insane thing that's going on there? Nobody else knew about? I don't think so. I really don't think so. If that's not audacity, I don't know what is. That's pretty fucking nuts. I mean, <laughs> if I was there, and God forbid I saw things and started thinking something like that, I would have been so thankful to know that I was going to sit down with fucking Hiroshi Robena, the one guy who you said you sat down with for four hours, who could have answered all your questions. Did you ask him any of them? Did you ask him about this? No blender? Did you ask him about all these opinions you had here? Or maybe you didn't since, you know, he has a cigar that is going to be selling in your shop. I don't know. Maybe one time it wouldn't seem like such a big deal, but on four out of six pages of the article, you can't help yourself but by not only mentioning cigar names that you'll probably be selling, but also posting big fucking photos of them in the middle of the article when they have absolutely nothing to do with the article in the first place. Or at least you try to tie it in, but it's pretty pathetic, to tell you the truth. Say goodnight, Max.